So after getting the Python server up and running with JavaScript, I noticed that doing machine learning all of a sudden becomes very easy because machine learning in Python is really easy. So I realized that you can just kind of start sending information across and then doing that in Python and then sending it back. The only kind of difficulty that I had is it is a little bit challenging with how camera access currently is in WebXR. So you have to do some kind of odd things that I've shown before with the camera access. And then the other thing is that in order to get it across the network, images are a lot heavier than the depth image that I was showing previously. And so you have to do a little bit of pre-processing before you send it or else the memory, like you just end up having too large of a gap in terms of how much memory you have to send. And so basically what I was just doing is grayscaling and downsampling and that pretty much it. For the first high torch model, I had a depth network already set up because I was looking at depth a while ago and I wanted to see how, how neural networks performed. All of the depth measurements we've done so far are from depth through motion algorithms and so that means that you're moving the camera around and that's creating the depth information. Neural networks work differently in that they are just image processing so they can work with a single image. Uh, the other difference is that they have they, they tend to have biases imprinted in them. So whereas depth through motion, you can kind of introduce it to a new environment and it should be able to get a pretty good grasp on things. So the neural network versions tend to have a lot of biases inbuilt in them. So they tend to have an up and down. And so generally things that are down, things that are, are low in the image will tend to be deemed closer to the camera and things that are near to the top tend to be further away because most of these are using image sets where it is taken from ground level and they aren't rotated upside down. So it tends to be that inbuilt bias. The one that we are using in particular uses the Kitty data set. And so that one has wide images that are mostly street views. So it tends to be much better in situations where there are buildings at a distance and cars at a distance rather than kind of inside of a house or any sort of other environment. So it tends to be really good at recognizing buildings and car structures, but not other things. Uh, so that's another inbuilt bias. They also have the tendency to kind of project particular types of things into the image. So this particular data set had a lot of signposts. And so every now and then you'll see like a signpost that it seems to assume is there because that is very common in the data set. And so you can kind of see how just using like the data set can actually heavily impact what the actual neural network sees, which is pretty neat. But when you start comparing the depth image with the actual image together, it's not particularly convincing. So that's something to keep in mind you definitely have to squint very hard to see the same image. So I do think that the depth sensing built into Chrome is a little bit more effective than this particular network on just general images, especially with the kind of pre-processing that we did and stuff. So like there's probably a way of doing this better. So this is a little bit clumsy in its actual implementation. There is an extra flip that I made and then also it looks like the images are slightly squeezed. So that might also cause some issues as well. So the downsizing function maybe should have been rewritten. This code can be split into two. First, there's the Django view. And so that will be in Python. And basically that's running the neural network. So we just have a bunch of things to up start PyTorch up and initialize PyTorch. And then we have the actual predicting function. And so this does some pre-processing and then it will be calculating out the metric depth. And then it turns that into an image that can be put back into JSON that we can send back to the cell phone. So basically we get in a downscaled grayscaled image Image, and we put it through this neural network and then we respond back with the image and for the other component, for the JavaScript, we basically are combining two projects that we've done before with the depth capture and then the camera access. And so we are basically using the projecting aspect of the depth capture to project our 3D or our depth image. And then we are using the image or the camera access to get that image and then send it to the server. And so the actual image we get is going to be a full-sized image. And so there's a few things that we want to do set well, when we send it over so that it is of smaller size. And so we will grayscale it and then we will downsize it to what the actual neural network is expecting. <laughs> I couldn't find a good image processing library, so I just did this all by hand. But in particular with the downsizing, sometimes neural networks expect a particular thing. So this might be something that the neural network doesn't quite understand. Like the grayscaling might be different for the actual what the network is expecting. So this is something that I did that might not might have caused some extra errors.